Did you know that 90% of all Stardew Valley marriages end in divorce? It's true. I mean, 85% of that 90 comes from dangerously funny playthroughs, but still. Hear me out. I am a licensed psychologist in the 2D universe, which is another way of saying that my degree is completely meaningless. But really, if you can fall in love with pixels, then what's wrong with my 8-bit certificate? At the end of the day, you want to know why your cartoon spouse makes you deserving of a lighthearted roast. And when it comes to matters of extreme bias and cringe opinions on video games, there's no better expert than myself. It takes cringe to know cringe after all. Oh, and if you smack that subscribe button, you can join the cringe empire and get a free, insufferable rap at the end of every video. Trust me, non-subscribers totally don't see it. Anyway, let's get right into it and start off with one of the most universally loved and non-controversial characters of all time. Shane. Oh, Boy, I guess I'll start by getting the obvious jabs out of the way. You have problems. As a matter of fact, your problems make daddy issues look downright wholesome in comparison. It's not just a meme. You truly believe you can fix this guy. When he was rude to you in that first conversation, you latched onto him immediately, knowing and being entirely correct that he would have a softer, nicer side to him, the way guys like these always do in farming games. And then you saw the blue chicken event and had all of your suspicions confirmed. You? You're an empathetic person. So you don't think about the fact that worse comes to worse? He won't pay child support unless the child is a chicken. You try to see him for his strengths, not his flaws. Which means you choose not to notice that his room looks like this every single day. Don't you worry, he's totally past the whole alcoholism thing. You definitely made him a better man. I rate this 10 out of 10. I'm watching over your marriage with popcorn at the ready. Haley. <sighs> Blondes, am I right? I see you, friend. Haley gets far too much hate, and you're vocal about your love for her. You're hoping to absorb her normal vibes and social skills through osmosis, all while knowing you're nothing like her and never will be. And that makes you very sad. This is probably something she'll let you know, too. You dress like a clown, she's gonna say something. You making less money, she'll go out into the barn, take some pictures of your cows, then hand them over to you during dinner like, uh... Those are nice, but why are you giving me- Oh, it's nothing. Just figured you want a picture to remember them by. Since you're gonna need to sell them to keep this farm going! What's next, John? Installing a butcher mod to make ends meet? But who am I kidding? These are all good things to you. The moment Haley called you gross, you had already sold your soul to the Regina George of Stardew Valley. I give you an 8 out of 10. So she's gonna make a really nice Instagram reel following your inevitable divorce. Oh. Elliot. Look at this guy. He's got hair long enough to star in a Pantene commercial, but you already know he's way too expensive to use that sh**. He plays piano and writes novels, which gives him an artistic side. It also makes him a tiny bit pretentious. Okay, really pretentious. But that's not the only problem here. You think you love his ability to make the daily and routine sound romantic with his poetry and songs? But what are you gonna think when he whips out something he really should have left in the Twitter drafts? The newest poem he made about how when the kitchen light hits your eyebrows just right, it makes you look for one moment as if you have a centipede on your forehead. He says it with a straight face too, as if he expects you to drop to your knees and start weeping at the beauty of it all. I bet he writes down the lyrics to Mr. Brightside and tries to tell you it's his original work. Yeah, he's not for everyone, but if you have a flair for being overdramatic and extra, you should become a YouTuber. You should marry Elliot. I rate this fashionably disastrous out of 10. Maru. See, here's the problem with exposing Maru fans. It's a little hard to do because I don't think anyone actually married Maru. If there are any Maru lovers present, please tell me in the comments why you married her because I'm coming up dry. You just have a thing for glasses on girls or something? I think Abigail already has that nerd aesthetic on lock though. Maru may or may not be smarter than you, but she'll definitely act like she is either way. You must love a woman who subtly talks down to you. And sure, you may have an interest in science or space, but what's your game plan for when she causes the Pelican Town robot uprising and destroys your modest way of life? Knowing her, she'll find a way to make it sound like it's all your fault, too. You enabled her. I rate this 1 out of 10 for Sebastian was right about his half-sister all along. 
Just kidding, kids. Please try to get along with your siblings. Alex, this is really easy. You are simply a morosexual, which means you think a man is infinitely more attractive when his way of speech makes him sound like his brain is leaking out through his nose. He's not being mean to you when he calls you farmer. He just genuinely doesn't have the brain capacity to remember more than like three names. This guy peaked in high school. People like to say that about Haley, but Alex hasn't even figured out that he's graduated yet. He's still working that out, literally. Shirtless lifting equals more intellectual gains. So if you're trying to feed your superiority complex, he's a great peck. There's no way you can feel bad about yourself when hanging out around this guy. He's also some decent eye candy material, but don't tell him that. He'll blink at you and say, hey yo, I don't have candy in my eyes. That sounds like a medical condition. Oh no, am I gonna die? Who will take care of the ice cream stand? I rate this, probably got a concussion at the age of three that never truly went away out of 10. Emily, this has to be the weirdest vibe on this list. I get the sense that you were in love with a manic pixie dream girl at some point in your life and you thought she would be fun and exciting, but the only thing she gave you was emotional trauma and she just sent you a text complaining that you changed the Netflix password. One day you go outside to harvest your crops, but she gives you a lecture about nature and respecting the fields and how the energy of the universe will punish you for your greed. Don't get me wrong, she cares about the valley and seems nice on the surface, but if you know anything about Emily, you know she's far above surface level. Yeah, she gets high, literally, figuratively, whichever way you want it. On the plus side, you are married to a girl with blue hair, and that's almost like being married to Hatsune Miku. Doesn't that sound nice? I'll answer that for you. No, it doesn't. Because Clint is gonna crack open your head like one of his geodes for this betrayal. I give you a 4 out of 10 for please have a will written by tomorrow. Sam. If you like man children with Peter Pan syndrome, look no further. Or if you're just a big fan of the Super Saiyan style and the burning stench of hair gel, there's no one who could treat you better than this guy. The thing about Sam is he's always trying to do a kickflip. Notice how the game never says he did a kickflip. This shows you that when this guy sets a goal, he works at it every day, but still fails to reach it. That's pathetic, but also extremely relatable. He's easy to romance because he loves Joja Cola, which means he has both the mentality and the taste of a child. You can only hope he has a strong toothbrushing routine, but if I had to guess, the only thing he would floss with is his guitar strings. And when they break, he's gonna pull an Elliot and write a song about it. Knowing you, he'll swoon over it too. Cause sad men with troubled families playing angsty music and rock bands is kinda your thing. I rate this 1 out of 10 for One Direction, Wattpad fanfic. Leah, now this is an extremely cultured choice. I mean, I'm high key convinced she's a serial killer who keeps her victims locked inside her shed until she's ready to get rid of them. But if you really love her, you can learn to cope with her flaws. Or you'll realize that her murderous tendencies are a pro and not a con. One of the main pros being that if you tell on her, you'll be next. She can carve through flesh the same way she carves statues out of wood, which means she turns bloodshed into an art form. Aww. Romantic. This isn't because she's a ginger, by the way. She became a ginger because of her soulless behavior. That's right, folks. You learned it here first. Gingers are made, not born. Why do you think her ex left her in the first place? All I'm saying is, don't just take her word for it. Ex could be code word for execution, for all you know. Oh, and braids are cute or whatever. I give this a 10 out of 10 because love spelled backwards is evil. Hey, Dr. Harvey, help. I don't feel too good. I got something I need you to diagnose. It's my fucking wallet, Harvey. And it's deep near terminal. Stop charging me for almost dying. Do I look like someone who can manage money to you? If I remember to ship my five fish before going to bed, it's a good day in my Stardew Valley file. So that must mean that you, on the other hand, are pretty good at navigating the mines. Or you find it really romantic imagining Harvey taking care of you, and you just ignore the whole upcharging thing. Tell me, is it his mustache? Well, that's definitely not his name. I can't think of a less arousing name than Harvey. It's definitely not his outfit either. Do you just have a thing for goofy nerds? I mean, don't let me stop you. Besides, Mario, this is the choice I understand the least, but I find you strangely wholesome. I give this a 6 out of 10 for the 6 times this man bankrupted me in spring of my first year. Penny, do you like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain? You definitely didn't marry this girl. I think Penny's idea of a good time is reading random Wikipedia articles for 5 hours at a time and memorizing cool yet irrelevant facts, which means she's a keeper. This is the pure 
you're as sweet as character on the list. So when she poisons you with her horrible cooking, you'll know for sure it was an accident. She's got damsel in distress energy, considering her strained relationship with Pam. And that means she's great for anyone with a savior complex. Anything's better than a trailer, right? So imagine how she feels when you upgrade Pam's house and now she realized she married you to get away from poverty for no reason. You think Penny has emotions? You think Penny can feel things like love and happiness? <laughs> Ask the museum curator what he sees Penny reading and tell me that she's as pure as you want to think she is. You've been nice to me, Farmer, so I'll tell you. Don't come to the Egg Festival tomorrow. I rate this 5 out of 10 for may or may not be hiding extremely sinister and dark thoughts behind that innocent smile of hers. Sebastian. This guy is horribly named because he's like the dead opposite of a butler. He does have the same emo vibes as this one, though. Never deleted his MySpace account, so he truly believes his hairstyle is modern and attractive. You also believe this, despite knowing otherwise in your heart of hearts. Like a true degenerate, he wakes up at ungodly hours, so the only way you're going to see him is if you do the same. Hope you're not a big fan of your lungs, because stepping into this guy's room is going to absolutely wreck them. Once you're married, he quits working entirely, which means being in IT is as horrible as they say. Or he just enjoys living off of your hard-earned money, polishes his motorcycle more than he polishes the kitchen table. He'll never look at you the same way he looks at Kermit. But I mean, hey, Kermit is pretty sexy to be fair. And considering the popularity of the Yandere mod, you guys like a little toxicity in your relationships. I give this a 4 out of 10 because there's four letters in the word frog. Abigail, at last, we arrive at the default marriage candidate for Stardew Valley. You've made a popular choice, and it's easy to see what you like about her. If it's not the purple hair, it's probably the fact she's elite XD gamer girl who is willing to fight monsters to keep you safe. Duh. Never mind that she's most likely the result of the biggest scandal in all of Stardew Valley history. Or that it's gonna be real awkward when Pierre starts selling back his own son-in-law's products as if they're his own. It's fine. That's just another fun and crazy character arc in this light novel anime to you. If you're okay with feeling slightly fine, maybe extremely c by Sebastian, then you can't go wrong here. Gaze deep into her beautiful blue eyes as she sinks her teeth deep into the rock you just gifted her. That's Amore. I'm giving it 500 out of 10, because who wouldn't want to date a cute dragon GF? But wait, there's a bonus roast! Probus kids and mod users, I didn't forget about you. So here's a speed round for the popular marriage mods. You married wizard, you also have daddy issues. But unlike Shane lovers, you like to think about what your life would be like if your father actually cared about you. If you married Pam, your favorite popcorn hub category is white trash. If you married Marnie, you don't deserve to be roasted. You deserve a warm hug and a freshly baked apple pie to be gifted to you every day of your life. If you married Linus, you want to stick it to the man and you enjoy the sweet aroma of cookies with a hint of liquid garbage. If you married Clint, you have a thing for sweaty muscles and men who will never love you as much as they love a weird hippie that doesn't know they exist. If you married Sandy, you're superior to literally everyone else on this list, but you're also a simp. If you married Robin, you like ponytails and you derive sadistic pleasure from the idea of telling your new stepchildren I f***ed your mom jokes. If you married Willie, you believe in the inherent eroticism of the meme women want me, fish fear me. And finally, if you roomed with Krobus, you are either an asexual or a monster f Both very pog things to be. Do you see now? No one in Stardew Valley can ever truly be happy except for people who side with Krobus. You can't see the beauty in the sewer. Can you even see the beauty within yourself? Of course not. It's okay. It's not that easy. It takes time. And to fast forward that process of self-love, I've prepared a rap that only the subscribers can see to help you understand the power of the Krobus void. Oh, and if you like this cringe content, I also stream Stardew sometimes. I'm serving as a JoJo spy in my current playthrough, and I think the villagers are starting to catch on to me faster than the chat can roast me. You know, just girly things. Now toss me the mic. It's the OG Krobus, coming into focus. Not to be confused with some wizard hocus pocus. He says, nice to meet ya, but do not call me creeper. I'm not in the mines, I'm a sewer dwelling reaper. And that's no cap, it's all facts. And I'll feed you to the rats, just stay put, cause he got that crow back. Yup, there goes the Pokemon pun. It's concerned Dave's son, gotta crown him number one.